But they follow the heart of the matter. So the heart of the matter is the heart of the matter. The philosopher, the philosopher above all the philosopher, then the believer, and then the theologian. I wanted this, this is a little bit tough. Let's just read his introduction, because um, uh, you can see how the Pope approaches the whole subject. He's approaching the threatening death of the Catholic Church. Because the modernist idea is that death of doctrine. It's the death of dogma. It's the death of truth. It's the death of God. It's the death of man. It's the death of everything. It's the complete dissolution of the mind. It's the incapacitation of the mind. The paralysis and crippling of the mind. Not only for the Catholic Church, for anything and everything. Which is what we see in the world around us today. Men with crippled minds. Which is why the women are having to take over. Because the men no longer have any, any truth in their minds. They're dishrags. A man without his reason is a dishrag. A woman without a reason, she's still got a heart. And the, the, the reason is never the strong part of a woman. Never try arguing with a woman. Two rules if you want to try arguing with a woman. One. Rule number one. She's always right. Rule number two, if she's wrong, go back to rule number one. <laughs> you can't argue with a woman. Their minds don't work the same way. They do have minds, but they don't work the same way. They run on something. Women don't run on mind. Men run on mind. And that's why the men today all around us are so weak, because they've got this rotten philosophy in their bones, it's not something they may, they may or may not have studied it, but even if you haven't studied it, it's in the journalists, it's in the politicians, it's in the, it's in the priests, it's in the bishops, it's in the Pope, it's in, this rottenness is in everybody today. Lawyers. In, in, Lawyers. Lawyers, oh yes. Oh, how. They for long, they be judges. Judges, oh yes. Very much so. Very much so. For a long time, they've been bending their minds. You're probably a lawyer. <laughs> I'm not asking. I'm not asking. Oh, but, but you know, it's everywhere. This this disease, this disease of, of, of unreality, of, of denying reality, is today everywhere. And, and we soak it in because it's just all around us. It, it, it's, it's, in a way, it's not our fault. Well, here, and the Pope is just yelling. Watch out, everybody. This is the end of the line. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Um, we popes must guard the faith and feed the flock. This is paragraph number one. Pas Pasco Pascendi. Pasco Pasci is, to, is a pastor. Is somebody is, who feeds the flock. So uh, the, the, the duty of the pope is to feed the flock. Um, sorry. Especially today. The enemy is within. The enemy is inside the church, says the pope. Then it was only a few priests. And when he reacted so strongly with this encyclical, he blocked modernism. But he simply drove it underground. The modernists went underground and they crept underground, 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 until they came up again in Vatican II, when the world was much more ready for them. In Pius X's time, too many people, too many churchmen still had too much common sense. And therefore, Pius X was able to stop the nonsense and re-establish sense. But underneath, the nonsense was still working. Because the nonsense pleases men's pride, it turns them into God, and therefore, they, they, with Vatican II, man was able at last to become God. Men were able to change God, to change his religion, to change the church. That's what happened in the 1960s with Vatican II. He says, the enemy is within. Then it was only a small group. Pius did his duty to smash them as hard as he could. He excommunicated them. But they continued. So, number three, and he describes the enemy. He's intimate, he's radical, he's disguised, he's audacious, he's outwardly correct, just like Immanuel Kant. He's disobedient. Leniency has proved, uh, uh, being, being kind in general, has proved ineffective. Now we must use, uh, tear off the modernist mask. We must tear off the mask and show the modernists for what they really are, crazy, sick, 
and dangerous madmen. They are madmen. They are pretending that the mind can unhook itself from reality. It can't. It can't unhook. But they, they say that it can in order that they can pick and choose amongst the realities and they can refuse or they're free to refuse all the realities of the church of yesterday that they don't like. They want a church which is nice and soft and easy, which allows divorce, which no longer has ten commandments but only six or five, etc., etc. That's what they want, and that's what they've got with the novel sort of church. Five. Hence, this is what we're doing with Pashen. We have we're going to deal with the modernism. Firstly, the teaching, which is the doctrine. Secondly, the causes, and thirdly, the remedies. You can see that here on this sheet: causes, remedies, and then the conclusion. That's all on side one. You mean then we turn over to the heart of the matter, and here is where this is the most difficult part of all. Um, we'll see, we, we may not, uh, you can see there the philosopher comes in front of the belief of the philosopher, the theologian. You can see under the philosopher that the principles come in front of the application. You can see in the principles that the negative come in front of the positive. And you can see that the negative is, you can all call it either phenomenist <coughs> agnosticism or agnostic phenomenon. Big words, many syllables, it simply means I know nothing the other side of the appearances. Phenomena in Greek is the Greek word for appearances. <coughs> Things appear. Okay, so the, it's the doctrine that I know nothing the other side of the appearances. It's the doctrine of Kant. Here, and here you've got it in capital letters. Beyond the phenomena, things appearing as they appear, all is unknowable. That is the dynamite. That is the borders. That is what levels the building site. It destroys all theology. Everything is flattened by that principle. He will show in a few moments uh, how, how it applies. But, and he's immediately going to show, God, author of nature, miracles, and external revelation are all beyond the appearances. That means a tiny bit of explaining. Um, okay, let's... Why can't we here? Uh, I buy a giraffe. <laughs> um, then, here, let's take. Uh, here's a beautiful sunset. All right? And here's Frankenstein. Okay. Frankenstein is. Uh, senses, with his senses, I, I've done this the wrong way around, I'm sorry. I, the colors are important. I should do this in blue. I think we use blue for the appearances of the senses. So, here is a beautiful sunset. Sunsets are beautiful. And here is Frankenstein. Okay, Fr with his eyes, Frankenstein sees the sunset. Just like any, 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 any animal does. Any animal can see the sunset. And, but the, the eyes just become, the, all that the eyes see is the color. All that your eyes saw of the eight lines of the little circles with the blue color everywhere. But it, the mind saw that it's a giraffe. Okay, now, what does Frankenstein, what does a, a, a normal man's mind sees a beauty which he immediately, he naturally says, it's an effect. And that effect needs a cause. And therefore, when a man, for instance, sees, when a, a, the mind, the mind picks up that it's an effect. The, the eyes don't see that it's an effect. It's the mind that sees it an effect. And the mind goes from the effect to the cause. In other words, God, as the author of nature, is the other side of the phenomenon. The, eye, the, the, the eyes only pick up the appearances of the sunset. Let's say the golden colors, maybe a few clouds, maybe the remaining blue of the sky, whatever. The eyes pick up that. The eyes see what is in fact beautiful. But the eyes don't appreciate the beauty. It's the mind that sees. This is something. This is beautiful. Just like anything beautiful, the, the, the mind picks up the beauty. The eyes see the appearances, the mind says those appearances could contain beauty. There's beauty in them. That beauty is an effect. The sun hasn't caused itself. 
The sun hasn't created its own beauty. This, the, the, the sunset naturally, to, the, to a natural man who's not modern, but who's not been perverted by the atheistical modern world, a man seeing anything beautiful in nature naturally says, there's a creator, there is a God. So God is the author of anything in nature, all the beautiful things in nature. Everything, almost any natural, almost any natural scene is beautiful, has its own beauty in nature. Unless you're a modern man that's twisted and all bent out of shape like Picasso, for whom everything is ugly. But a natural man, but it's not the eyes that see that. Then what happens to this knowledge of God, which is natural to us through the beauty of nature, what happens to this knowledge of God if the mind can't get behind the appearances? It's all just wiped out. Therefore you can understand why <coughs> Kantians don't believe in God. The mind looks at that and says, well that's, that's just a, a, a phenomenon of nature. That's, that's something of nature. That's, nature does, what's the big deal? Beauty, well, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. If you, if you think it's beautiful, good for you. I don't think it's beautiful. I just think it's a great lump of fiery matter. What's beautiful about that? If I was anywhere near it, I'd be <coughs> toasted to a cinder. So, I mean, it's, it's really not a very sympathetic thought. I don't see any beauty in it at all. That's how modern men talk. So, the, the, the mind can no longer read behind the appearances. Let's take another example. Miracle. Okay, here are the six water pots of Cana. I'm not a great artist. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. You remember the six water pots of, of, the, of the marriage of, marriage of, Cana, of Cana. And um, they're water, they contain water, they're, that's what they're for. And uh, maybe the apostles walk by and they saw sure enough it's water at the beginning of the feast. And then in the middle of the feast, the marriage feast, they see the steward saying something to a moment. Who does the steward speak to? Uh, he may speak to the, maybe he speaks to the mother of God. The mother of God speaks to Jesus. They have no wine. They, they've run out of wine. The, the, the guests have been Irish elbow maybe, and they've been uh, tipping it back, and there's no more wine. And the mother of God is concerned because it, <coughs> guests won't be happy and so on. So, our Lord knows that she wants him to work a miracle, and so uh, he, he, he says to the steward, uh, go and fill the, uh, fill, or, no, they, they're, they're jars. He says, go and fill them with water. And he fills them with water, and then when, they, when it arrives, it, it's wine. Now, it looked like water, it tasted like water, it seemed water, all the appearances of water, and now all the appearances are wine. Now that doesn't happen in nature. But what does the eye see that it's a miracle? No. The eye sees the transparency, the transparent liquid shimmering in the jars, and then the eye sees that the liquid is red. The eye doesn't think. The eye sees, but it doesn't think. It's the mind that's thinking behind the appearances says, that was wine, that was water, now it's wine. Hey, what's going on? They look at the mother of God and they look at the Lord. And, and they begin to twig that our Lord is a, a, a miracle. This is a miracle. It's a miracle, but it's the mind that sees that it's a miracle. It's not the senses. Therefore, the mind looks at these jars before and after, and the mind says it's a miracle. Again, because it's reading behind the appearances in all six jobs. And the mind does read behind the appearances. That's what it's for. That's how it's called intellect. Intellect comes from, in the Latin, intus legere, to read inside. The mind is a reader inside the appearances. That's what it, that's what it does. And Kant says it doesn't do it. Kant, Kant declares that the mind is crippled and unable to do what it's doing all day long. Even for him, it, it was, he said it, it, it was, his mind couldn't read behind the appearances. It, it was reading behind the appearances all day long, otherwise he couldn't have lived. 
He couldn't have put something, he couldn't have distinguished between food and not food, and, and, and kept, kept, he couldn't have kept eating and drinking if his mind wasn't all the time reading behind the appearances to tell him that it was good food to eat or good water, whatever to drink, good beer to drink. So again, if, if the mind can't read behind the appearances, then you wipe out miracles. You just wipe out miracles. So you can work a miracle in front of a modern man, he says, so what? And that's what's happened. Sometimes you get modern, famous modern people who've, who've defied, almost defied God to work a miracle. God doesn't usually work under defiance, but sometimes, for the sake of a famous atheist, he works a miracle right under his nose. But do you think the atheist then says, I believe? Sometimes, perhaps like St. Thomas, my Lord and my God, but usually they so what, so what? I couldn't read behind the appearances before, I can't read behind the appearances after, what's the big deal? It's a, it's a phenomenon which I can't explain. That's how science, quote-unquote science, quote-unquote explains miracles. It says, so what? I can't explain it. It's, it's, it's a phenomenon without an explanation. That's what modern science says. And people are happy with that. And people are mad. People today are mad, they're sick and they're mad because they've turned their backs on God. They're blind. You turn away from God, it's the light of the world, and if you turn away from God, you go blind. God is the truth, and if you turn away from the truth, you create a world of lies. You've got a world of lies today. Then, uh, the third example that the Pope gives, you've got it right there. The third example is... Um, uh, the author major the miracles of such an external revelation. External revelation. Uh, let's again. Here is um, uh, here is the are the appearances of the Galilean carpenter. If, I, please God forgive me for speaking about you like that. With the Galilean carpenter is the appearance. It's, it's a phrase to express our divine Lord as appearance, just as appearance. He appeared as a carpenter from Galilee. They're the Galilean carpenter. So those are the appearances. Now he teaches, he teaches the apostles, he reveals. So what he reveals is all kinds of truths of revelation. He is IHS, he is God, and he reveals God to his to his apostles. But they if, if, if the apostles were Kantians, they would have said. I, I read, they would have re re read the appearances of the Galilean carpenter, but they would have stopped there. <coughs> Whatever God revealed, it would have been expressed in words which hit the apostles' eardrums, but they couldn't have understood, they, they, they could not read behind the appearances, and therefore revelation, external revelation to the apostles. <coughs> Can, can you see how devastating this principle is? Whenever I want, I can just wipe out whatever is behind the phenomenon. On the, on the grounds that I don't know what's behind the phenomenon. I do in fact. I do all day long. But I deny that I do. And that denying that I do gives me liberty to free myself from God, from miracles, and from revelation. It's a bulldozer. It's not only a bulldozer, it's it's an atom bomb. It's an atom bomb on the building site. It just blows everything completely sky high. What is going to take its place? We come to the positive principles, and that though they, they, they are called, that is called, vital immanence. What does that mean? Another big words again. Vi vita in Latin is life. Vitalis is the adjective living or of life. Like we still have an English vital. It's vital that he receive his uh, insulin, otherwise he will die. It, 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 it's, it, his life depends upon the, he's a diabetic, his life depends upon the insulin, the insulin is vital. So a thing that's vital means something on which life depends. So vital imminence. What does imminence mean? Imminence means remaining within. It's Latin, manium manere, in manium manere, remaining within. So, what we've got now, is uh, Frankenstein. I'm going to see a bit more of Frankenstein. Uh, 
Here's Frankenstein. <coughs> I'm not a great artist. Okay, there's, there's Frankenstein. Now, Frankenstein has a big bleeding heart. Okay? Love, love, love. So, since Frankenstein's mind comes to a stop at the phenomenon, Boom. Can't go any further. Then, how, how, what is Frankenstein? How is Frankenstein going to, what's going to happen in Frankenstein's kitchen? How is, going to, how is Frankenstein going to refabricate the world? How is he going to remake the world? Since the mind doesn't grasp reality, then what's going to happen is that the heart is going to replace uh, reality. So the heart is going to feed from below to the mind. So that the heart is going to take the place of the mind. The heart is going to substitute for the mind. That's why the novice of the new religion is full of love, love, love. L-U-V, L-U-V, L-U-V. Because the mind is shut down. There's no longer any thinking, there's no longer any doctrine, there's no longer any dogma. There's just what you feel like. Do you feel that God exists? Father, I don't feel that God exists any longer. Don't worry, my dear, that's absolutely fine. What, you'll feel like it tomorrow here. And if you, don't, if you never again feel like God exists, then for you he doesn't exist. What's the problem? That's, that's where they're, we're at. So the, the heart is going to take the place of the mind. That, that's the principle of vital elements. Let's have a look at it. Uh, therefore, since th then, God, miracles, and the divine can't come from outside because from outside they're only the phenomena, and I don't know what's outside the, uh, the other side of the phenomena. Therefore, God, miracles, and revelation don't exist outside, they don't come from outside. But they're givens. They, 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 they're given facts. Therefore, they come from somewhere. Therefore, they come from within. They, they, they don't come from outside, they come from somewhere, they must come from within. That's imminent. Remain within. The truth comes from within. That's the modern wisdom. The truth comes from within. The truth comes from me. <coughs> I am the subject. The truth is subjective. The truth is subjective. What's true for you is true for you. What's true for him is true for him. What's true for me is true for me. The truth, my truth comes from inside me. His truth comes from inside him. Your truth comes from inside you. No problem. We've all got our own truth. No problem. Um, now, religion is a form of human life, Vita Vitalis. Therefore, religion, religion is inside, religion is life, religion comes from man's life inside. Religion comes from man's life inside. It can't come from outside because the mind does not function. The mind can't read anything of religion outside. Because everything of religion is the other side of the phenomenon which I don't know. But it, religion comes from somewhere, it doesn't come from outside, it must come from inside. Therefore it comes from man's life within. It's a vital imminence. Now all man's life comes from the sense of the heart and from his needs. And therefore the crucial principle of paragraph 7, religion comes from the needs of man's life. Religion comes from the needs of man's life. Isn't that nice? So, my, my heart needs religion. So my heart fabricates religion and puts religion into my mind. And I believe. Isn't that nice? So all religion comes from down here, or from here, at least here. Just wait. Just wait. The blasphemies of this system are horrible, just horrible. I'm not going to overrun any of uh, Let's have a look. Um, so, so we've got these two huge principles. <coughs> Other side of the phenomenon, we don't know anything. What we do know when, we come, when it comes to religion is what comes from the inner, the inner need of religion, the inner sense of religion coming from inside. So religion is no longer objective, 
Religion is now subjective. And everything in religion is subjective. So if I like it, that's fine. If I don't like it, that's equally fine. And that's why Father, a, a, good, a good parish priest today, a traditionalist will come to him and say, Father, I love the Latin Mass. Can't you celebrate the Latin Mass every now and again? Yeah, that's a very good idea. I'll do what I can. I, 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 I think you're right. I think it's great. And then two days later, a modernist, a raving modernist comes to him and says to me, Father, I think the modern Mass is great. Couldn't you celebrate next Sunday Mass in pyjamas? And Father says, oh, that's a good idea. Yes, I agree with you. If that's what you like, I'll, I'll celebrate Sunday Mass in pyjamas. And he do, he will do. You know, the, the father that just recently in California, <laughs> I think California myself, uh, those, little, the, those little moving boards, what do you call them? Motor boards? Hoverboards. Ho uh, hoverboard. And he went up and down the aisle. The priest went up and down the aisle and looked at the congregation. And the congregation clapped because he was moving up and down the aisle on a little, you know, this little automatic hoverboard. Another one, you know, for Palm Sunday, you see, in a new religion, you've got to make people feel. So you need novelty all the time. One of the blessed things about the Tridentine Mass, you don't need to invent a single thing. In fact, you've got to stick strictly to the rubrics laid down for you. You do exactly what the church says, because it's entirely objective. It doesn't depend at all on the priest's beautiful feelings. He doesn't have to get up there and start rocking and rolling and and persuade the people that he's feeling his religion. No, 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 no. no the, 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 he just performs the rubrics and the, and the congregation know that he's performed Mass and therefore there has been the real presence. God has been there. God has come down on the altar. God, they receive God in the communion. It's all entirely objective. It's nobody's choice. It's, it's except the choice of, of God. It's God who instituted this. It's God's choice. But, but the modern religion is man's choice. So, I've got to, you've got to make the religion feel. So, on this Palm Sunday, this, uh, this, uh, the, the poor modern priest has to think of a gimmick, you see, something, some novelty to strike the people and make them uh, 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 feel, then their religion is real. So on Palm Sunday, he came up the aisle on a motorbike. Vroom, 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 so he came up to the altar on the motorbike. Oh, wow, 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 I feel that man, he's modern, he's on a motorbike. He's a, he's a motorbiker. Oh, great. Was that a Harley Davidson? Wow, oh, wow. What, what, what's that got to do with religion? Yeah, it, it's, it's absurd. So, but that's what, that's what, if everything depends upon man, you have to do something like that. You have to get something new to, to, to get a feeling out of the, uh, get a feeling into, get a feeling out of the people. So, all right, now I begin to apply it. There are the application of these principles, and you can see what it's going to do. Firstly, faith, revelation, supernatural, and dogma. Why are each of those four in inverted commas? Because, because the same word is there, the appearance is there, they maintain the appearances, but the, the substance behind, the reality behind, is going to be quite different. So what faith means to a Catholic is one thing, what faith means to a modernist is quite another thing. Dogma, supernatural, all of these words, the, the new religion keeps the same words in order to deceive the people and to make them think that the old religion is continuing, but behind the, behind the words, behind the appearances, it's a brand new religion. So, or it's a religion changed as much as the people can take. You see, this system leaves you completely free. You can change the mass until it's quite different from the old mass, or in the rubrics of the Novus Ordo, you can actually choose a series of alternatives available to you which make the new mass quite like the old mass. For instance, the first of the four canons, which is one of the Tridentine canon, which Paul VI insisted on being included. The others, the revolutionists had cut it out. He made them put it back. Because he, he didn't want to cut with tradition, and he did. See, the, these poor people, these poor, these poor modernists, they, they're torn. They're torn between God and the modern world. Instead of saying the modern world is junk, and I cling to God, they say, I want to cling to God, and I want to cling to the modern world. It's not possible, you've got to choose. The two, it's not two and two are four, and two and two are five. It's, one, it's either or. So, uh, 
Now then, wait for it. Excited by the unknowable, the other side of the phenomena, the religious sense, uh, 